Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to wrap up the last four things that I was able to get to this nonfiction November. Let's talk about them. I think I'll go first through the two graphic novels and memoirs. The first one that I finished was Flamer by Mike Curato. This book is following a young boy who is at a camp over the summer. He's trying to understand himself better when it comes to his sexuality. He is bullied often and also he seems to be having a crush with his bedmate that he shares inside of his tent. It's about him also thinking about his own religion. He is Catholic and thinking about what his religion has to say about this possibility that he might be gay. A lot of the book is mostly in black and white and then there are sparks of red when there are really intense moments happening. Trigger warnings in here for like suicidal ideation. I think it's important to know before you go into it. Overall, I think I settled on three stars for this book. I really enjoyed the pictures and the illustrations, but I didn't really think that the writing was anything new to me. It felt very predictable. Even just like the narrative arc, I kind of knew exactly what was going to happen. And when I put this on my nonfiction November TBR, I had questions about if this was a graphic memoir or if it was a graphic novel. And it is definitely a graphic novel but it takes so much from the author and illustrator's real life that I question why he didn't just make it a full-on graphic memoir using his own name and everything because when you read the afterward at the end it basically to a T what happens in the book happened to him. It's set in the 90s because that's when the author and illustrator grew up. Those references also felt kind of awkward in the text. It felt to me like what is the point of this being a graphic novel and not being a graphic memoir when so many of the aspects of the story have to do with your own lived experience. The other graphic memoir that I read is The Times I Knew I Was Gay, and these are both coming out stories. This one follows a young boy, and this one follows kind of a teenage girl. I would say definitely he's younger than she is. What I really liked about this book is that it discussed how you have to come out multiple times. So it's not just that you come out one time, it's you come out many many times to many different people. And also depending like where you are in your journey, you have to come out many times. So that was an interesting different way for me to understand that experience and I liked how she wrote about that. The illustration style in this one is mostly remembering things and less dialogue and more just kind of entries. Again, this one felt simplistic to me in the writing style. I would come here for a more sweet and uplifting story. It definitely felt like a nice palette cleanser for me between the things that I was reading just because it ended so hopefully and I had been reading so many hopeless things. Another thing I would say is that the illustrations, when you look at the friends, and she has a few friends that she grows up with. Because of the way that they are drawn, they look very similar to me, and at times it was hard for me to understand who was who. Like, if you really look at the way the faces are drawn, they look so similar to each other that I didn't know sometimes who we were talking about. So yeah, that's what I thought about the two graphic works that I read for Nonfiction November. The two other books that I read were Maybe You Should Talk to Someone and Disfigured. I'll talk about Maybe You Should Talk to Someone first. This book I was really anticipating just because of how many people on my Goodreads friends have rated this five whole stars. I just felt like that was going to be it for me as well and I ended up really thinking that this was just okay. Talking about all of these books today, like these are all basically three star books. Nothing that changed my life but also nothing that really bothered me and nothing that I didn't gain you know, something from reading it. Um, definitely learned reading all of these books, they just didn't change my life. So this book is following Lori Gottlieb and her own journey getting to become a therapist and also uh, a time in her life when she began going to therapy herself and then also retelling some of her own client's stories in her own therapy practice. A lot of really hard stories and then also Lori Gottlieb talking about her own life. She's had like three different careers basically. What the situation is that that causes her to start going to therapy. There's a lot going on here. This book is 415 pages long. I think I have like four main things to say about it and the first thing is that this book is too long. I think it could have been 350 easy. It could have been 330 easy. If you read the acknowledgement she talks about how the first draft of this book was 600 pages and that kind of shattered me because I could not have imagined reading the same thing again for 200 more pages. That's the second thing about this book, is that this book feels to me very repetitive. It got to the point where basically I would scan 
the same paragraphs when we were coming back to one of our clients. She kind of reiterates what it is that we had learned about the clients beforehand and then goes on with a little bit more of their story. So it did feel like we were getting the same thing over and over again. To me that felt dull. To me that felt like my eyes were glazing over because I was just reading the same situation over and over again. I remember what is going on with this patient's story. I don't need to be told it again. Number three is that I thought that this was a little bit more corny and canned than I initially thought that it would be. And that might be just completely personal preference because a lot of people where I've read their reviews, they've really enjoyed the way that this comes across in the writing style. But to me, it felt kind of perfunctory. It came across as like she had an idea what she narratively wanted to say to meet the certain arc. These are clients that she's had over many years, but the way that they are described throughout the whole book, it makes it seem like they're all happening at the same time when you know that's probably not what happened. It's very possible that she met with Julie towards the beginning of her time doing therapy and then she met with John towards the last few years before she wrote this book and then she kind of just combined them all together. And I don't know if I that was necessarily a problem for me, it was just something that I noticed. And then number four of this book is I don't do therapy, like I'm not a therapist myself, I've never gone through therapy, but I have questions about the ethical aspects of this book. Obviously she says that like she's changed all of the names and she's changed a lot of the factors of the stories that would make it easy to figure out who it's about just to protect her privacy. To me that starts making me question the veracity of these stories. There's a lot of dialogue in this and my question would be is like is all of this dialogue as she remembers it? How much of it is like what the clients actually said and what she actually said versus like how she remembers it and how it fits the story that she wants to tell. Those were things that just kind of kept coming back to me as I was reading this book. I ended up giving this book three stars. And then last but not least, I just finished Disfigured and I think I'm gonna settle on three and a half stars for this book. This is a book that taught me a lot. This is a book that really has a lot to say about renditions of fairy tales and that's something that I don't know very much about. It's not stuff that I feel super passionate about. So I enjoyed that this taught me certain things about like the beginnings of fairy tales, kind of how stories have changed over over the years depending on what it is trying to tell about society. So I really enjoyed that aspect. I also enjoyed the parts of this that discussed her own personal experience. She has cerebral palsy and um, she talks about how that experience as a child specifically affected who she became. How fairy tales also are part of that. I think where I come to have some disagreements again with the Goodreads ratings of this book is that this book is kind of unfocused. The ways that the chapters are set up seem like they're going to divide the time topics very well, but when you're actually reading the chapters, there's a lot going on in the chapters where we may be talking about Beauty and the Beast in one chapter, but she starts talking about other things that have nothing to do with Beauty and the Beast in that chapter, and that took me out of what I was trying to read. I feel like this book, maybe it would have been better served by either focusing on the older fairy tale aspects or by focusing on the disnification of fairy tales. Going that way would have made the book feel a little bit more structured and a little bit more focused. That's what I thought about this, definitely based on what this is supposed to be, what this is meant to invoke, the topics at hand. I think this is a 5 out of 5 and I think it's definitely worth your time. But when it comes to the actual writing, the actual execution, the actual discussion of these things, I say this is like a 3 star. So together with that I'm gonna give it a 3 and a half. So that's it for my four little books that I wanted to talk about. I'm currently, I would say, a third done with A Promised Land by Barack Obama and that was another book that I read during Nonfiction November but I I didn't finish so I will come back when I have finally finished that 29 hour audiobook. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you've read any of these books or would like to read any of them, please let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.